Joining us now live, Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman. Madam Secretary, welcome to Fox News Sunday. Good to be with you, Brent. We want to obviously talk a lot about Ukraine, but I want to start where I left off there with General Keene, and that is uh, these 12 ballistic missiles fired on the U.S. consulate in Erbil, Iraq, from inside Iran. Just in the past few minutes, Iran is now claiming responsibility for that attack. What is the reaction to that, and is there going to be a response? Uh, this was a very concerning attack, as General Keene pointed out. Uh, indeed, uh, we do not believe that the consulate was actually the target of this uh, missile attack. Uh, we are very glad that our facilities are secure, that everybody's accounted for, uh, that no one has been hurt or killed. But all of that said, uh, this is great concern. Uh, there will indeed <clears throat> be a statement, I'm sure, uh, coming out uh, shortly. Uh, as well as calls in. This was an attack on Iraq's sovereignty, among other things, and of great concern to all of us. Obviously, we will be following this closely. We have U.S. personnel uh, there who work and live there, and as you mentioned, no, no casualties as of yet that we've heard of. But at the same time, the U.S. is closing in on this nuclear deal with Iran. Is that true? Is it close? Well, I think it's close, and we would like all of the parties, including Russia, which has indicated it's got some concerns to bring this to a close. You know, we are very concerned about what Iran is doing, but imagine these Iranians with a nuclear weapon. Uh, we need to get that off the table so we can address their malign behavior in the Middle East, uh, and we will do all of the above. Uh, but first, we've got to get this deal, and it is not yet closed. Madam Secretary, you can understand the disconnect for the average American watching this happening. As we're sitting at a table, not only with the Iranians, but the Russians in Vienna, we are getting fired upon by Iran. Uh, you're saying the target wasn't the U.S. consulate, but that's where it ended up. Uh, help people get square this circle, because it doesn't seem like a lot of people think that we should be doing that. It's, it's hard to understand. I appreciate that. But here's the deal. Uh, if Iran has a nuclear weapon, its ability to project power into the Middle East and to deter us, our allies and partners, is enormous. So President Biden believes very strongly, as does Secretary Blinken, as do I, that we need to make sure that Iran never obtains a nuclear weapon. And then we also need to deal with their malign behavior in the region. Uh, but first, we've got to make sure that they cannot obtain a nuclear right. weapon. I just have two more quick questions. You sure. think that this deal is as good as the 2015 deal? You were a part of that as well? Uh, I think we don't know yet. It is not closed. It is not finished. We are urging all parties uh, to do what they need to. And there's a lot of onus on Iran to decide whether, in fact, it wants uh, to move forward or not, come into compliance and ensure that Iran never has a nuclear weapon. Right. And regardless of whether the deal is reached or not, is the, there a plan to deal with Iran's regional behavior, uh, proxies, terrorism fighting, these missiles, drones, uh, whether there's a deal with removing sanctions or not? Absolutely. Uh, very high priority, working with our pa partners and allies in the region to do exactly that. Okay. And last thing, there were, is reporting that two Iranians belonging to the Quds Force have been plotting to assassinate former National Security Advisor John Bolton, according to the Justice Department. Uh, and this is the Washington Examiner reporting that the department possesses indictable evidence against the Iranians, but the Biden administration resisting publicly indicting the men for fear that it could derail their drive for the nuclear deal with Iran currently nearing completion in Vienna. Do you know that to be true? Uh, what I know to be true is that we have a responsibility to protect American citizens from harm. We do that every single day, and that is true of all present and past American officials, and that is our highest priority. But nothing's being held back. Nothing is being held back. We are going to protect Americans wherever they are however we can. Madam Secretary, now to Ukraine. These new strikes overnight uh, in the West, just miles from the Polish border. The death toll now uh, at 35, 135 wounded there. Uh, nothing NATO or the U.S. has done so far has stopped Vladimir Putin. Uh, how does this end? Well, right now it looks like it ends uh, very badly already for the Ukrainian people. I think we all spend every day just horrified at the suffering of the American people. As your reporter on the ground uh, discussed, it is just awful, particularly in Mariupol, where people are either going to starve to death or freeze to death or die because they don't have their medicine. It is truly horrifying. There are two objectives that we have. 
One is to support Ukraine in every way we can. And indeed, since the Biden administration began, we have put $1.2 billion forward in security assistance to help Ukraine defend itself against this horrible attack. And the second is to put enormous pressure on Vladimir Putin to try to change his calculus to end this war, to get a ceasefire in the first instance, to get humanitarian corridors, and to end this invasion. That pressure is beginning to have some effect. We are seeing some signs of a willingness to have real, serious negotiations. But I have to say, as your reporter said, uh, so far, it appears that Vladimir Putin is intent on destroying Ukraine. We need to help Ukrainians in every way we can. Madam Secretary, everyone is wary of World War III. President Biden mentioned that the other day. But on Capitol Hill, there are now more and more lawmakers seeming to say that they're tired of, of giving Putin the upper hand here, at least publicly. Here's Senator Mitt Romney. President Putin has actually said the things we're doing are provocative. He's already said that the sanctions we put in place are like declaring war. Uh, he's going to continue saying that. And we're fearful of provoking him. It's time for him to be fearful of us. So is there a way to flip the script here? I think we've already started to flip that script, um, Brett. Uh, I think that $1.2 billion in security assistance, anti-tank, anti-armor, anti-aircraft, is really helping Ukraine to resist the onslaught of what your reporter said is a uh, army of Russia where Putin very badly miscalculated uh, how this war would go. Uh, it is nonetheless horrifying for the Ukrainian people, and so we want to support them in every way we possibly can. And we want to support everyone's efforts coordinated with the United States to try to mediate and end uh, this terrible, terrible situation. You're saying support them in every way, but the MiG-29 situation, these jets from Poland, really seem to be a mixed message. Republicans are now talking about that openly, uh, criticizing the administration. Here's Senator Tom Cotton. Take a listen. They're saying, on the one hand, Ukraine is not effectively using its current aircraft and can't effectively use this, this aircraft, so the gains would be very small. But on the other hand, Vladimir Putin is going to view this as such an escalation that he might strike the United States or strike NATO. Both of those things can't be true. The Ukrainians don't need applause. They need jets. They want MiGs. Get them the MiGs. The Ukrainians say... If the Ukrainians say they do want these MiGs, whether we assess that they're good or not for the battlefield, why not get them that? So, look, if I were President Zelensky, I would want everything and anything I could possibly get. So I understand this. The Pentagon, however, made an assessment uh, that trying to move these planes was very complicated, that backfilling them was virtually impossible, that what Ukrainians really needed were anti-aircraft, anti-tank, and anti-armor weapons, which is what we are supplying them in great measure and coordinating with other countries to do the same. So I understand the frustration. And one of the things I think has been really terrific in this horrifying situation is there has been bipartisan support for Ukraine. Uh, I'm really grateful that Congress uh, recently passed the legislation that provided an additional $200 million in drawdown uh, that Secretary Blinken signed out yesterday. So this is a bipartisan effort at the Munich Security Conference. Uh, there was a strong bipartisan delegation in support of Ukraine, and there is that kind of support on Capitol Hill, which I think sends an important signal not only to Ukraine, but to Putin, that he can't divide America, he can't divide NATO, he can't divide Europe, he can't divide uh, the world. 141 countries signed up to a resolution at the UN General Assembly denouncing what mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin is doing. This is one man's choice to wage a premeditated, unjust, unprovoked war against a sovereign country. We can't let it stand. Quickly, has the Russia-China relationship suffered or strengthened as a result of this invasion? I think uh, that's an open question yet, Brett, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we saw Russia and China come closer together, certainly before the Olympics, putting out a long manifesto about their partnership and how they were going to move forward together. And at the same time, we've seen China pretty uncomfortable uh, with an invasion of a sovereign country. China has, the People's Republic of China has often said that sovereignty is key, territorial integrity is key, that countries should decide their own political future. We agree with those principles. We hope that China does as well. You know, in two weeks, 
in two weeks, Vladimir Putin undid 30 years of economic development. Uh, there was an international order that China and Russia both subscribed to that helped both countries develop for uh, Russia. That is now yeah. gone. We're seeing them uh, be taken out of every organization. Uh, the president's going to move forward with the Congress on removing them from most favored nation uh, status at the WTO, the World Trade Organization. I think the PRC is watching very closely. Yeah has to make some tough decisions. But yet they're sounding very bold, Madam Secretary. Just yesterday, China warned that any country supporting Taiwan militarily would face, quote, the worst consequences, adding no one, no force would be able to stop the Communist Party if it attacks Taiwan. That does not sound positive. So the last question I have for you, has Russia's invasion changed China's calculus when it comes to Taiwan? I th hope that China is looking very carefully at what's happening. Uh, we have a united world uh, with very grave and very consequential sanctions on Russia. Uh, we understand and support a one China policy, uh, but we don't believe uh, that China PRC ought to take Taiwan by force, uh, and we will do everything we can to deter uh, that effort by uh, the PRC. Uh, and I think they're watching very closely. In fact, I think they made that statement, Brett because they've seen what's happened and they're trying to go on the offense knowing that uh, they ought to be on the defense. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.